and today we want to talk about wine aging. So we all like to talk about wine aging and we all agree that good wines are better with age. But are they really and are wines which turn age well necessarily bad? Most importantly perhaps, what happens to the wine while aging? Why does it change? For a bit of clarification, while we're talking about wine aging in this episode, I'm referring to the aging of the wine once it has been bottled. We will talk and differentiate to another part of the wine production process, but only insofar as it affects the aging in the bottle. We can divide the changes that happen to a wine into two broad big categories. The first one is bacterial changes and chemical changes. Generally speaking, we want to avoid bacterial changes. So there are a couple of ways to go about it. One way is to filter the wine, so to filter the bacteria out of the wine. Another method that influences the bacterial activity in the wine is by sulfitation. And we will come back to sulfitation because it also has an influence in the chemical changes, especially oxidation. The other factor which affects bacterial activity in the wine is pH. So the lower the pH, the less bacterial activity, which is why also generally speaking, wines with lower pH, higher acidity, tend to be better wines for aging. So with that, we finish the bacterial changes. Main point is try to reduce bacterial activity so they don't happen so much. And now we go to the chemical changes. And the chemical changes refer sometimes to the composition reactions and sometimes to formation reactions. So some aromatics will decompose while some new aromatics will be formed. One good example of molecules which decompose while aging are terpenes. And terpenes are responsible for the uh, flowery aromas of the wine, like a muscat, which is why Normally, Muscat wines or flowery wines are better drunk young because these flowery notes will disappear. Second type of compound, the esters, because they are formed with a carboxylic component that can be hydrolyzed or synthesized. As such, some of them will disappear while others will be formed. And some of these esters are going to be desirable aromas and some of these esters are going to be undesirable aromas. Generally speaking, these reactions behave kinetically as a first order reaction. I know if you're into chemistry, I don't want to talk about ping pong BB mechanisms, so for simplification, in this case, we're going to think about the esters as just reacting with a simple first order mechanism. When talking about reactions, we tend to talk about the Arrhenius equation. So you can see in the Arrhenius equation, we represent the dependence between temperature and reactivity. And as you can also see in the formula, it's an exponential value. Uh, as such, changes in temperature will accelerate some reactions far more than another, depending on the coefficients in the Arrhenius reaction of the activation energy. Therefore, if the temperature increases too much, the undesirable reactions tend to become much faster than the desirable reactions. That's why keeping wine at a constant temperature, usually around 12 degrees Celsius, is optimal because that way you keep the reactions which produce desirable compounds, you keep them going while you don't accelerate other reactions too much. This is also the reason why some people have tried accelerated aging of the wines and to do it with temperature is very bad. The conclusion is you don't want the wines to be stored too warm. And that's a perfect segue for another factor. And it's the acidity in the wine. Acidity in the wine is mostly present as tartaric acid and it's potassium salt, potassium tartar. This creates a salt which generates a buffer which maintains a relatively stable pH in the wine. Now, if you lower the temperature too much, solubility of sodium bitartrate is dependent on the temperature and it precipitates. This is why sometimes if you see a white wine 
which is pretty junk and you see crystals at the bottom, some sedimentation it's going to be potassium bitartrate now it's not necessarily a defect of the wine sometimes it will mean that the wine was sold to cool the result of the lower temperature and faster crystallization of sodium bitartrate is of course you reduce the buffer capacity of the wine and the pH will change more or is more sensitive and it will also go high thus reducing the stability of your wine to some bacterial reactions and some other reactions so you will get a flatter one for one because you won't have the acidity this freshness but you will also lower its capability for storage so the recommended storage temperature is 12 degrees celsius high enough that desirable reactions are going on but low enough that undesirable reactions are not accelerated and not so low that you get more precipitation of sodium bitartrate. Now, whenever we talk about wine aging, of course, everyone talks about oxidation. Oxidation reactions are also very important in wine aging. And the first question is, how does oxygen get into the bottle? So while different closures will have different oxygen transfer rates into the wine, and we're going to go into that in our next video, there is always a little bit of oxygen in the wine in the head space after you close it. While we're going to talk about closures in the next episode, one thing to look for is if your wine is closed with a cork, then you need to keep the cork moist because if it dries, it shrivels and it lets more oxygen through. That's why we tend to look for bottles which have been stored lying down and why we store our bottles also lying down. Anyway. However, the oxygen came into the bottle, it's going to catalyze some changes. Wines have sulfates added to them, which will reduce the bacterial activity in the wine, but will also act as an antioxidant. As such, the rate at which the wine absorbs oxygen from the atmosphere or the head space is going to increase, but the products of the reaction are going to be absorbed by the sulfides. The first and most noticeable change in a wine while oxidating is the change in color and you can see this in the red ones where they go from this bright ruby red to this more orangey kind of brick color and the white ones will go from very light to a bit more darker honey-like color so the, the reaction that catalyzes this color change is with anthocyanins we will go deeper into all the chemical reactions but that's a very complex subject so we're going to post that video in our Patreon. Make sure to check that out if you want to learn about the specific chemical reaction. Okay, so far we want to avoid bacteria. There are also chemical changes which happen within the wine due to its chemical composition regarding the esters, the terpenes. But everybody talks about the tannins. So what are tannins? What happens to them in the wine? Why are they so important when we talk about wine aging? Tannins are polyphenols in the wine. They're also referred to as flavan 3 oils. Many of you might already know that tannins do not come from the juice, but they come from the skin, the pips, and the stems. They also come from the wood, if the wine is stored in wood. That's why when we talk about tannins, we usually refer to red wines, because white wines tend to have absolutely no contact with the skin, while red wines are left macerating with the skins before fermentation. Since the tannins come from the, from the skin of the grape, the pips and the stems, for sure the varietal will have an influence on the amount of tannins. And so a Tempranillo or a Vaga, which have very thick skins and are small grapes, will have a higher tannin content when compared to a Pinot Noir with a thinner skin and a bigger grape. The tannins, when you get them in a young wine, as the original form as uh, polyphenols, they will bind with some of the proteins in the mouth, giving you this astringency and you will feel it. Your teeth will feel dry. Your mouth will feel dry. This is the astringency we talk about. Now, as they age and their molecular structure changes, they will create a velvety mouthfeel. This is what we usually call this well-developed tannin. So when you have an older wine, you taste it and the astringency is gone and you have a heavier feel in the mouth like a bit more body and, and it feels a bit velvety 
then you can talk about the wine with well-developed tannins which will make you sound pretty cool so during aging the polyphenols will break from their chains and then react with other components of the wine so like anthocyanins or they will react with other polyphenols to cross-link and go from a straight change into different more complex forms these are the reactions that cause the velvety mouthfeel and these are also the reactions that reduce the astringency of the wine we also know this isophenols or tannins are antioxidants so they react with oxygen and they reduce the undesirable oxidation products in the wine and increase some desirable products so that's why when you get a wine which has a very astringent feeling mouthfeel and it's a young wine you can assume that it's gonna age better than a wine that doesn't have this astringency some of these very tannic wines are gonna be of course almost unenjoyable when they're young because of their strong astringency but will become very enjoyable after aging um, there are of course some wines which we really like, which have a very high acidity and are very tannic and so the acidity counteracts the astringency to make the wine drinkable when it's strong and keep it drinkable throughout a very long period of time so they, all the changes lead to the wine reaching a peak at a certain age and then just start to go down in its quality this is why if you're a bit more poetic you could say that the wine is alive now how do you figure out when to drink a wine at its optimal point? Well you need the experience, you need to try different wines at different ages I would very much suggest doing a vertical tasting so you get a good impression of how wine from the same producer, the same grapes, the same parcels changes from year to year if you follow us on Instagram, we tend to put in our tasting notes whether you should drink the wine now or keep it for a bit longer. So while we usually recommend wine tastings, currently being April 2020, we don't recommend social gatherings, you have to shelter in place. But there's one experiment which we have been doing with a couple of bottles at home is we open them and drink a glass a day and store them at the right temperature and as such we get day one, day two, day three and the oxidation process is accelerated because the bottle is of course already open and some oxygen has come in and we've done a description of a wine bottle after day one and up to day six, day seven so if you try this make sure to post your tasting notes comment on it and tag us on the post so we can all learn together thank you for checking out this video Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you can get the next video where we're going to talk about wine closures. And check out our Patreon so you can get an in-depth dive into the chemistry of oxidation. Make sure to check out the merch store. See you on the next one.